welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. And today I'll be focusing on the process known as lipolysis. Now, lipolysis is a catabolic process which involves the breakdown of fat stores known as triglycerides found within your adipose tissue. Here is a quick illustration of the major components that make up a triglyceride molecule. Let's begin with the glycerol backbone. Next, the three fatty acid tails. And finally, the three ester bonds that link these three fatty acid tails to the glycerol backbone. So in summary, the major components of a triglyceride are the three fatty acids, a glycerol backbone, and the three ester bonds. As stated earlier, lipolysis involves the breakdown of triglycerides. The process more specifically releases the attached fatty acids away from the glycerol backbone. In order for this to occur, each of the ester bonds needs to be cleaved by a process termed hydrolysis, which simply means breaking bonds through a chemical reaction with water. The whole process requires three separate steps. Each step cleaves one fatty acid away from the glycerol backbone until all fatty acids are liberated. The process also liberates a single unit of glycerol. In total, three water molecules and three different enzymes are required to achieve this outcome. In order to help guide you through each of the steps, I will be referring to each water molecule as HHO, colored in blue. Okay, let's begin with the first step. This involves the hydrolysis of the first ester bond. You will see that during each ester bond cleavage, the blue hydrogen atom on the far left bonds to the oxygen on the glycerol backbone, while the remaining blue HO attaches to the carbon on the fatty acid residue on the right. Here is an illustration of the products of the first step. You will quickly see that the first step liberates the first fatty acid away from its parent glycerol backbone. Or to put it another way, the original triglyceride has lost one of its fatty acids to become a diglyceride. Just in case you're unaware of the terms tri and di and what they signify, well they actually signify the number of fatty acids attached to the glycerol backbone. So 3 is tri versus 2 which is di. Finally, it's also important to mention the name of the enzyme required for the hydrolysis of this first ester bond. This enzyme is termed adipose triglyceride lipase. Okay, let's now look at the second step. This involves the hydrolysis of another ester bond, in this case the terminal bond on the other side. Once again, this involves water depicted as HHO in blue. The blue hydrogen atom on the left bonds to the oxygen on the glycerol backbone while the remaining blue HO attaches to the carbon on the fatty acid residue on the right. Here is an illustration of the products of the second step. Once again, you'll quickly see that this step liberates a further fatty acid away from its parent glycerol backbone. Or to put it another way, the original diglyceride has lost one of its fatty acids to become a monoglyceride. Finally, the enzyme required for this second step is known as hormone-sensitive lipase. Okay, let's now look at the third and final step. This involves the hydrolysis of the middle ester bond. Once again, this involves a water depicted as HHO in blue. The blue hydrogen atom on the far left bonds to the oxygen on the glycerol backbone, while the remaining blue HO attaches to the carbon on the fatty acid residue on the right. Here's an illustration of the products of the third and final step. Once again, you'll quickly see that this step liberates 
a third and final fatty acid away from its parent glycerol backbone. Or to put it another way, the original monoglyceride has lost its one and only fatty acid to become the alcohol known as glycerol. Now the enzyme required for this final step is known as monoglyceride lipase. So in summary, during lipolysis, three water molecules hydrolyze three ester bonds within a triglyceride molecule in the presence of three different enzymes to liberate glycerol plus three fatty acids. Now there are a number of hormones which trigger lipolysis, the most significant being adrenaline, followed by cortisol and glucagon. While the previously mentioned hormones facilitate the process of lipolysis, insulin has the opposite effect. In fact, it is frequently described as the most potent anti-lipolytic agent in the body. This is because it triggers the opposite process to lipolysis termed lipogenesis. This involves the creation of fats such as triglycerides and their subsequent storage in cells found in adipose tissue. In addition to insulin, ketone bodies also suppress lipolysis. This might seem a little surprising given that ketones are frequently observed when the body is forced to derive most of its energy from fat breakdown, as observed during late fasting and starvation. It certainly warrants further investigation. Based on this, I will be unraveling how this works in more detail in a future presentation. So please subscribe and ensure you also select the bell icon to receive an update when it is released on my channel. Thank you for listening and don't forget to click like if you have found this video to be useful.